November 8th. Thank you, Donna. I think we need to amend the next meeting date to today. We do. I yes. know I'm looking it over tonight. Yes. We do. We just did that. That's the only minor change I see from the 15th to the 13th. Other than that, does anybody have any missions, errors, recommendations? No. Nope. Motions? No. Nope. Motion, motion to approve. Seconded. All in favor of motion to approve the minutes of November 8th? Say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, say nay. Unanimous. Cool. Um, the skin, uh, the, the discussion of the CPC plan updates. Chris, have you done anything with the, uh, able to do anything with the recreation about updating the plan? Uh, yep. Yep. So um, the batting cage one is complete. Um, I don't know the exact status on the one um, Wayne was turning in. Uh, the other one with like the the fence and all of that kind of stuff. I don't have the paperwork on that one yet. But as far as the one I was working on with the batting cages, uh, that's all said and turned in. Okay. That's the application, not the plan. Yeah. Yeah. As far as the CPC plan, you were going to go back to him when he had a chance. And see if this still made sense for you. Um, what is written under the recreation part of the CPC plan? Um, okay, are you are you talking like um, I get what exactly are you talking about? I guess I'm missing this. I'll let you do. Do I explain it, Judy? Or well, um, we we do a plan every year, and there's a section of objectives for the recreate for each of the buckets and we look at it theoretically every year and see if the committees representing those buckets still approve of what's there okay. and I can I show you the, I can send you the link and point out where the rec stuff is okay that'd be great we need to get it done by the time we really do projects in February or approve final or March or whenever it is. But before we vote the projects, we really should have the objectives clear. Gotcha. That's the logic anyway. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'll get that email, I'll explore that, and then uh I'll get right on that. And just read it over, Chris. I mean, there's like Judy said, there's objectives and goals. Um, and if they're all the same today as they were back when they wrote it, fine. If not, maybe we should make the changes. But okay. what happens and when we make decisions, we go back and look at that plan. We base our decisions on that. Okay, understood. Want to talk about the funds available, Jude? Uh, well, I should say that um, the Historical Commission oh, talked sorry, about... I thought you were the, done. That's all right. We talked about the historic preservation objectives at our last meeting, and we had one open question. We just needed to do a little research, and we'll talk about that. We're meeting next Monday, so I'm sure we'll bring... Uh, well, I know we've already made one small revision. We'll bring our revised uh, priorities to the January meeting. Okay. And they're quite modest. It's not a... Okay. And the housing committee already updated and sent objectives along, but we, I do owe Judy numbers. I keep forgetting about it because it's not my favorite part, but I, I will get to it. You and just I will send it directly to you. Housing production plan. You've got It's true. Property. I can. I can. And that have I no have excuse. No hard excuse. copies now. There isn't an excuse. It's true. It's easier now with that. I'll get them to you. Any other comments on the CPC plan? Okay. Funds available. Judy has spent an uh, enormous amount of time with Jessica. As she said in her email, it's very hard 
to explain exactly how these finances work. I've been on the committee for 13 years now and I'm still learning a few things. Um, so I can imagine when Judy and Jessica got together, it was rather difficult, but they came up with a, with a, pr a proposal. So let's take a look at it. Okay, she, Jessica apologizes. She had a doctor's appointment this evening, so she couldn't be here. And she really did her best. It's There's no, a lot of the things are counterintuitive, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, so you see a couple of extra columns here. Those were to help her kind of understand the the adjustments that we make in the process. So starts with the where things stood as of column B1 is, is where things stood as of June 30th. And I don't know if everybody has this in front of them or not, or, okay. Poor Paul. Anyway, you don't care, Paul. I'm listening. I'm, I'm breezing through yeah, the October sure. minutes. It's, I'm it's breezing through October while you're doing it. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we, for this year, then we can add the allocations that we voted at town meeting in the spring for the, for the buckets for this year. So that's column B2. And we assumed $190,000 in revenue, 95 from the town, 100% match. Um, this adds up to, we also added a little extra in those buckets to true it up because we had underestimated revenue previously. So there's an extra 1200 in each of the 10% buckets. B3, we've spent almost $500 in administrative expenses so far. And if you add those columns across, then you get column B4. Judy, excuse me, since you're, um, I think the heading on B3 should read since July 1st, 23. Oh. Yep, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. One of the hard parts of this is you're going back and forth in fiscal years all the time. I still don't understand the town's fiscal years, so <laughs> you know, um, good luck. <laughs> thank you. So where we stand now and what we can spend this year is column B4. Um, so there's about dark here almost six hundred thousand in non-expense money um not much in the two open space and historic preservation buckets but about one hundred and twenty thousand in the budgeted reserve that can go anywhere and one hundred thirteen thousand in the housing bucket plus what they have in the housing trust now the fun part um the state requires us to project revenue for fiscal 25 or for the next fiscal year and, and then to allocate buckets. And we usually show that at this time of year because we're probably dealing with projects to come out of that fiscal 75 money. We, Jessica and I, assumed revenue of 200,000. This is conservative. Uh, we got about a, um, just over a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred and one thousand in town, town revenue, and a hundred percent match. So we had two hundred, two hundred two thousand in revenue last year. Um, but I think two hundred thousand is a nice conservative number and nice round number to do ten percent calculations on. Um, so one question then is, if that's a reasonable revenue assumption, do we want to true it up again? Because we were about $12,000 low on our revenue assumptions. So that would mean adding another $1,200 to each of these buckets. And that's not in there. Simple enough to do, isn't it? 
simple enough to do. I well, think it makes sense. It won't affect us if we're a little bit over or a little bit, or is it better to be a little bit one way or the other? I mean, or well, we're what we are, we are probably under on our revenue projection, mm -hmm. but this makes up for the last year's underestimate. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and we really want to keep to, as close as we can to ten percent yep. of, of what we've collected. So. So yeah. I would recommend adding another twelve hundred to each of the to historic preservation, open space, and community housing, and then that thirty six hundred would come out of the budgeted reserve. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and we've done it in the past. Yeah, and it's better to stay on top of it than put it off for a year and then yeah. two years. Of I think it's almost. I feel better being conservative on the on the revenue projection and then truing up than <clears> overestimating <throat> and, and putting too much money in buckets that you don't really have. Right. All right. Yeah. I think, yes, definitely. So you're saying we got twelve thousand or twelve hundred to true up? How much do we have money do we need to true up? We underestimated by twelve thousand, so it would be twelve thousand. So ten percent. Ten percent would be twelve hundred. For the three buckets, mm -hmm. and then a remainder. Then, then the remainder just just we can't spend it this year anyway. It shows up next year. It'll show up next year. Okay. Yeah, some of it is in the CP two. Some of it is back in column B one. The stuff, the revenue from that the town produced showed up at the end of the year and Dara counted it in column B1 in the C2. So so that's already in there. The 101 so, instead of the 99 or whatever we projected at. 95. Yeah, and we projected 95. So right. so that extra 6,000 is already there. Okay. Column B, column C2 adds in the six, extra 6,000 for the- I don't know how you guys keep track day. of it. <laughs> <laughs> Laboriously. It, is that Judy? The I did. I had one other question in the footnote. The second half of the footnote. It reads, "And the fifty-seven ninety-nine. That's money added to the fund balance for the higher state match than assumed." But I couldn't track the fifty. I didn't know where this fifty-five thousand seven hundred ninety-nine dollars existed in the numbers. Yeah. Well, that's 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 the that's what's. Is that what you're talking about now? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about now. Okay. The, the state match was, we assume 95,000, it came in at 101,000 basically. Right. So, it, so, so it was exactly that amount. The state gave us, gave us that much more than we had projected. Yeah. 5,799. We, we, okay. we are sitting on it, but we can't spend it. Okay, thanks. Clear as so, so till next fiscal year. So that's that's part of what's added in in that 134 in column, column C2. And then adding all those up produces the money that's available in, in fiscal 25. So minus, minus what we use for projects now. Yeah. So for the projects we're taking to town meeting, most of them are probably fiscal 25. So so that's what's there. Mm -hmm. Clear as mud. Clear as a bell. <laughs> Poor Jessica. Glad you know what you're Brian, doing. Brian was helping her. Anybody any more questions? Thank you, Judy. This is very helpful. I hope Jessica gets a hold of it. Seems like she's willing to learn it. She's willing. I think at the moment, the, she's got the transactions down. I don't think she quite understands what she's doing yet, but she knows what goes in what column. Good start. All right, let's get on to some applications. I'm gonna bring them up in the order that they were submitted. Number one, 
Selling of the library brick services comes from the library board of trustees. They're asking for $6,500. Apparently, I don't know how long ago, but they sandblasted the bricks to clean them. And in doing so, they took off the protecting sealant that was on there. Now they want to reapply the protecting sealant. Um, everything is here that we've asked for, except for, and you didn't bring this up, the protective sealant has a lifespan of eight to 12 years. I think that's an important piece of information. Um, Alan, I, um, as you know, I, I was, uh, I, <laughs> we can't use CPA funds for maintenance and um, for historic preservation funds. And, um, and the Historical Commission hasn't talked about this application yet. We'll do that Monday. But uh, I was struggling, as you know, uh, two weeks ago with the question of, since we understand that we can't use CPA funds to paint the town hall, you know, which is, um, which would last for 10 to 15 years and we do to protect 200 year old clabbered um, and window frames. I had trouble understanding what the difference is between that and putting sealant on bricks, which would last, I think, I think the library application says eight to 12 years. Um, I actually went back to Stuart Saginaw on Friday to say, you know, could you help me understand the difference? And Stuart was, he was kind of ambivalent. Wouldn't you say that, Alan, in his response? He was and ambivalent. He asked, pardon? He, he was, was. There, there he is was no ambivalent. set, there is no set period of time where it yeah. changes from uh, preservation versus maintenance. Right. So unfortunately, he hasn't gotten back to me since Friday, um, except to ask for another copy of his email exchange with you. But I, I brought um, what the CPA uh, legis you know, the, the law says um, on this matter is that maintenance, <laughs> you're all gonna love this because none of this is precise. Maintenance is defined as incidental repairs, which neither materially add to the value of the property nor appreciably prolong the property's life. I don't know what appreciably is but keep the property in a condition of fitness, efficiency, or readiness. Uh, I mean, my main concern is that if, if we can use these monies to reseal brick, I don't know why we can't use it to repaint <laughs> clabbered. It seems to be like, and, and that of course is gonna be a bigger expense for the town. And it's, and the, the town hall, you know, it's, it's been since 2013. It, it needs, it's gonna need some repainting before long. So sorry to go on about that all for so long, but that's that's what I'm worrying about. <laughs> I totally agree with you, Donna. Um, I don't know if it's up to us as a committee to set the period of time where it changes from maintenance to preservation. Uh, I think shingles, re-roofing after 25 years, that's preservation. I think we've all seen many area towns use CPA money for re-roofing. We don't see very much CPA money being used for painting. Right. And I, I had accepted the no dollars for painting. I disappointed Brian Domino when I pointed that out to him, you know, mm -hmm. but um, now this has thrown it. I think it's broader than just painting. It's, 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 you don't want to open it to all maintenance. And a right. lot of things are temporary. Right. right. And no, I and I agree. I agree with all of that. I'm simply not understanding why sealing brick would be different than painting wood. It's, I don't know that it I think you're assuming that somebody's decided that. And I don't know that No, I'm has. not. I'm not. Oh, I, okay. I I guess I'm I guess I'm uh, being uh, I'm I think they are the same. And I, 
<laughs> no, they're either eligible or they're You're not. Diplomatically bringing up a yes. point of question on yes, the yes, eligibility well, well, of this actually project. actually wasting time by taking so long <laughs> to say what I think. <laughs> I, I kind of agree. I, I have a hard time. I don't really want to agree because so I would like to be able to support the library, but I, it doesn't seem different to me than painting. And I don't, I don't know. I could be convinced the other way. I feel like I'd like to be able to help the library, but I, from what I understand, I, I don't know if I think it's different than maintenance. I, I don't know. What the guys, uh, you repoint a chimney. You do that every 25, 30 years, maybe. Again, the yeah. roofing, 25. But painting and resealing. Eight Glazing to windows. Right. Well, we talked about this when the library asked about the work. You know, I mean, we did we did use CPA money to re repair and restore the front porch of the library but when the when the library asked about their window work last year and pointed at the church we said you know what we're doing at the church is the entire original window is being removed and remade <laughs> properly and then reinstalled that's right. that's different from i mean even i know how to reglaze a window <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. again reglazing would be maintenance yeah, yeah. yeah. sounds like we're in agreement I think so too. You want to vote on it now? Or you want to mull about it for a month, and we'll talk about it on January. Maybe, maybe we can get something a clarification from Stuart. Maybe, like I said, it's 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 that's such gray here. Like you said, it does it help? I this? Not, that's not going to happen. And when he talked yeah. to me, he said it was so generalized that it's going to be up to every individual CPC oh, okay. committee. And he wasn't. <laughs> he had really no help. Yeah, that's too bad. Other than someone's got to make a distinction between maintenance and long-term preservation. Yeah. And that someone is the local CPC. So it's on us. Yeah. And you said this is only good for like eight to 12 years out? That's what you look up uh, the chemical that they want to use. I think it's okay. Contra, Max Shield or something and on the label. It's eight to 12 years. Mm -hmm. So that would be a more like you said a maintenance issue. Yeah, you just like you said, be doing it in a couple more, yeah, dozen years, you'd be doing it again. <laughs> do we uh, I know this isn't our worry, but Alan, do you know if they've also put it in front of the capital planning committee for I town funding? I do not know. Okay. Interesting because I was thinking. One distinction between maintenance and preservation is whether it's a capital expenditure. Was a lot? Or an ordinary expenditure. I wouldn't consider this a capital expenditure, but maybe the capital expenditure committee doesn't yeah. deal with think that way. <laughs> anyway, I think it I think it might be that none of the, the town departments don't have ordinary maintenance money in their budgets. In their budgets. So certainly not this no. I, I not, mean, certainly right. not this you're kind right. of money. In yeah. the town budgets, typically, especially smaller towns like ours, there's only room for like the things that get done every year. So in effect, the capital budget often becomes the anything that's not annual budget. So a paint, you know what I mean? Which is yeah, precisely I do, I do. why this would end up there. Mm -hmm. But it's true, right. right? Have they now missed the capital planning meeting i i forget but i i feel like brian had sent that out a while ago maybe this, someone even if we don't vote this is not a new problem um right you know, this sandblasting must have been done well from the tone of years. the proposal it sounds as though uh, very few of the current trust if any of the current trustees were trustees when when the sandblasting <laughs> which is probably not a great thing to do to very old brick um, was done. So it wasn't done in the last couple of years. No, I, I can't remember it quite. I mean, I know it was, but I can't remember. It was white during the bicentennial. 
pretty sure. Okay, we'll put it on ice and we'll talk about it on January one more time. Interesting. Makes sense. Do you guys want to vote on and get rid of it? <laughs> I wonder if somebody shouldn't get back to them in case they didn't put it on the capital planning budget and want to try to sneak we'll it in there Bob. over I'll the talk. next month. Okay, I'll talk to Bob about it. All right. I'll tell them which way that we're leaning. We just didn't vote on it. We're not voting on anything tonight. But for how the discussion went. Okay. Very good. The Yellow Cemetery Tobacco Barn came from the Whiteley Historical Commission. They want to replace a couple of rotting sills on the northeast corner of the barn. They're looking for anywhere from 4,400. I think that's with using screws and angle iron up to 7,250, which is using peg to hold it together rather than modern modern fasteners. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Well, this will all be sort of hidden by all the board, right? You wouldn't see the anything on the sills, right? I'm just trying to visualize this. As far as the uh... you'll see the sills. Oh, okay. You see that? Yeah, you, yeah. Okay. Has any other work in that barn been used? Screws and metal fasteners? Do you know, Judy? There must have been other work done. Well, the only work that's been done and since we've lived here is 15, 16 years now is some repairs to the doors. Um, I don't know. I think Historical Commission will discuss this on Monday too, and they may have a recommendation then. Um, I know Nicholas's opinion is that uh, Mortise and tenant joints are a little over the top for a working building. If it were a museum, it would be one thing. But, um, and I think. He's leaning towards um, using screws and metal fasteners? Yeah, yeah. We'll be interested to see what the Historical Society says. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm laughing because when Nicholas made new laundry doors for us, he, we agreed that hand plane doors would be the best looking thing. So he's no. <laughs> depends depends on the project and the client apparently. Well, and they yeah, are beautiful and, laundry doors. <laughs> yeah, well, he hand planed clapboards for us too, but um, yeah, that's a different. No, I'm I'm being facetious. I mean, yes. my point is he he it's he's thought out his recommendation. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I was thinking about it. We do change hardware on other things like the, you know, the, the windows at Town Hall or, or those at the church or, or at least the ones at the church aren't going to have the sash cords anymore. They're going to have side spring supports to go up and down. Um, and that's fine. You know, it's, it's the original materials, but it doesn't have to be the original hardware, I don't think. And so we'll talk. I, I have to say, I didn't know. I knew the yellow barn was a beautiful barn, but I thought the articles that Judy found that mentioned the barn were really interesting. And I was um, so glad you included those. Oh, it was important. Fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's personal interest in this. Yeah. It certainly is one of the oldest one in town. And And it's not just a building that we like to look at, but neither the cemetery commissioners nor the highway department could survive without it because it is full of stuff and it has to go someplace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good use for it. Yeah. yeah. A used barn is a happy barn. Anybody have any more questions for Judy or anybody with the historical commission that they would like answered? 
this seems more easily able to be determined that it's an eligible project, right? Because this is reinforcing the structure, like not to keep harping on the definition of maintenance versus preservation, oh. but it it feels a little bit more. Seventy five year old sills, you know, it's not. Sorry. This is this That's is right. to, this is to prevent the barn from falling down. Falling down, <laughs> yeah, it's fairly <laughs> substantial. <laughs> in yeah. yeah, and the new sills are going to last more than eight to twelve years. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice and clean. Hurley he batting cages. This came from the rec commission. They're looking to put a double, if I read this right, uh, batting cage down at Hurley Park. They're requesting twenty two thousand dollars. Wanna tell us a little bit about it, Chris? Uh, yeah. This would be uh, you're breaking up. This would be me. How about now? Better. So, uh, yeah, the double lane aspect of it. So that's how you can have multiple people hitting at once. And we're thinking going that way since, you know, you drive by in the springtime, you see all three fields um, being used. Uh, so, you know, you're talking to kids. Um, so if you do that, multiple teams can be using that facility at the same time. Um, so the actual like batting cage going through Beacon Athletics, it's usually $13,000. Right now it's on sale for 10. Um, you know, we didn't include the sale price in what we were doing, um, because who knows what the price will be, um, when we get the, um, you know, when we would go forward with the project. Um, we have turf on there. Um, you know, turf's what we use over at the high school field, makes it, uh, you know, you're not scuffing up the baseballs. It's not going to be uneven. It's just going to be a nice surface. We've had it for six years over at Frontier, and it's totally, you know, totally good. We have loam under it, so that's supporting it, helping with uh, drainage um, and all that good stuff. So I feel like that's critical for it. Um the loam is in there. We went by what uh, Wayne was um, estimating for that cost. And then finally, like uh, the parts that come along with the batting cage, it's like an L screen. So something you throw behind, there's a mat to hit off of. Um, so just a couple of essential, you know, bit, bits to go with it to make it, it function um, as it's intended to. So, uh, yeah, that's... That's it. Are you guys going with new turf or used turf? Uh, used turf. Used turf. So that's a 3150. You got the application in front of you, Chris? Uh, I just want to see how these numbers add up. Yep. Um, let's see. Yep, I got it all in front of me. So the cage and... It's ten thousand seventy nine. Yep. The accessory package is fourteen eighteen, right? Yep. So that's eleven four ninety seven. And then there's the next page is turf for thirty five thirty one. Yep. Well, and we should take the tax out of that because we wouldn't yep. have to pay tax. I, I I could I couldn't I couldn't that was I couldn't make your numbers add up to twenty two thousand. So I'm glad Alan's doing this. Yep. All right, but that's for new turf. Um, no, okay. this would be, this would be the used stuff from um on deck sports. And, uh, I'm not sure that the CPA can fund turf. There was a, a court case well, back in the early days of the CPA when when uh, the recreation use was more limited, and one town wanted to put. AstroTurf on a field on a playing field, and the townspeople took it to court, and the court found that this wasn't consistent with the open space provisions of of the CPA. Right, like this wouldn't be like you know you wouldn't be playing soccer on this like games or a field type thing. It's just like the oh, no, but it says I'll have to check the wording on the. 
Community Preservation Coalition website, but I think it's it's fairly explicit that it won't fund AstroTurf. So I was hoping there's something else you could use, like wood yeah. chips or or sod that doesn't kind of grass that doesn't grow or something. Or, or Chris, I was wondering whether for for other Recreation Commission um, projects that we funded, you have some reserve funds, don't you? Ah, uh, yes, we do. I wondered, and 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 for uh, it isn't that they're required, but the other other proposals have had some matching money from out of the um, reserve funds. So, I mean, obviously this isn't for dis decision tonight, but maybe particularly if the artificial turf is ineligible, maybe, you know, maybe there'd be some, you know, some way to keep the project going, you know. And yes. Yeah. yes, certainly. I mean, if if the, the turf were not able to be purchased, um, you know, we would definitely do what we had to do to, to make sure that we get it. Because, yeah, I mean, that's really... That's the only kind of surface you want to use with that with that type of a equipment or facility, whatever you want to call it, kind of thing. Well, we can look into that. Um, I'm sure the coalition will have a response to that question. Um, I'll give Stuart a email. And... Well, I'll, let me look up what okay. they have under their technical assistance. Great. There's okay. Thank there's you. some wording there. Let's start there and. Okay. See how definitive it is. Okay. I have a question yeah, for you. I still want to make these numbers add up a little bit. Sorry. So you got eleven five for the cage and accessories, and then you got thirty five hundred for. This is from on deck sports for the turf. Yeah. Right? And then what's the practice sports? The used turf for thirty one fifty. Oh. Yeah, so that's um those are just two other companies um who I got prices from. Uh just as like kind of examples that, that that cost would be um you know pretty consistent. The on deck sports, that's uh you know, that's just a company I've had a lot of good experience working with purchasing equipment both for Whaley Rec and um for the for the high school baseball team. So mm -hmm. I was thinking that would be, um, you know, the company we'd gonna want to go for. Just somebody I could vouch for, um, you know. And we're always getting good product from them and everything. Our products. But yeah, also, you know, with the number that I that I put in there, um, you know, that was something that was considering the estimated loan costs, and then also, um, you know, bumping it up by ten or fifteen percent. Um, just to, you know, anticipate um, those costs when June were to come around, June, July, whatever. Okay. Could, could you, um, Chris, could you just put in a in a chart for the next time we look at this, a summary budget? <laughs> yeah, like so, an itemized. So we all know what yeah. we're looking at. Sure. J just, just the way you talk through it, I think that would be great. Cool. I have one question for you too, Chris. Sure. You're saying that there was an old, I'm looking at the case, there was an old batting cage. Where was that? And you compared to this new one. That was, um. so that one was right behind the uh, pavilion there. It was okay. along the parking. Yeah. Okay. Oh, was, yeah, that parking was. Okay. So where are you going to place it in the same area there, the new batting so cage? Or? This one, our plan was to put it in between the, um, the big field and the little little league field okay so kind of like that alleyway alleyway that's where the scoreboard's going to be um when we put that up for the springtime mm -hmm. okay so, so you, were, you were getting too close to the uh if it was where the old one was it was you'd have to come before the confirmation commission if you're near the river i'd say you would have to trigger a whole bunch of new paperwork yeah. and stuff, so make sure you weren't going near there yep good cool cool Any other questions for Chris? All right. <clears throat> Center School Historic Building Preservation. Um, there you are. Actually, tonight is when they're ex the deadline for accepting the RFPs for anybody wants two. to buy. Excuse me? They got two RFPs. They That's did. really good to hear. Yeah, I'm so proposals. <laughs> 
Just wow. From the uh, just for my information, what's RFP stand for? Request for proposal. proposal. We got we, we got two proposals in re, in response to our request for proposal. Oh, okay, okay. I just like <laughs> yeah. there's just yeah. certain jargon I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Do we so, know anything about the proposals yet, or should we have to like we'll stay tuned for the next? Uh, yeah, sounds like this was just a placeholder. Like you said, yeah, just a placeholder. Well, yeah, this, it sounded was like it. case either in case nothing came in or in case none of the uh, none of the proposals was acceptable right. um this was brian's one, this was brian's idea and i think he was just feeling cautious that you know it's not going to do the town any good to let the building deteriorate if we don't have a potential buyer in the wings or even yeah. if we do right but he and but it's proposal. certainly not a, it's certainly not a complete proposal right they solved the issue with the milk bottle or are they still working on that there is no issue Oh, I thought it's it was just an open interest. question. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, one of the proposals is, is, it still is an open question? Yes. Is it still an open question, the milk bottle? Well, the RFP, the town's RFP says that um, the town is surveying the property right. and that the lines, the line between the town property and the property to be sold will be shaped so that the milk bottle remains on town property. Okay. Um, the discussion at the select board has been all hypothetical. If there is the perfect potential buyer and if the buyer objects to the adjacent milk bottle, then we would have to figure out something to do. Okay. It turns out the milk bottle actually weighs 6,500 pounds, not 3,000 pounds. And the concrete pad to which it is attached probably weighs 10,000 pounds. But the forklift so, that'll pick that up. The forklift can do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there is. Okay. Any other questions? Again, what they're looking to do, they have holes in the roof. They want to, if the proposals are not accepted, they want to patch up the roof. Which again is not maintenance. <laughs> Which I'm not sure why, because they're just patch holes. They're not going to put a new roof on. Well, they haven't decided what to do yet. So, and I, I suspect it's a moot point. So we'll see. Okay. All right. And then we got snowmobile trail signage. Um, a day late with the application. Uh, that's why I'm here. I figured I'd have come with my tail between my legs, see if there's anything I could do to uh, be considered. But if not, so be it. I said, I appreciate your email, Paul, but I think maybe you misunderstood the ineligibility. It wasn't the trails, that the trails aren't permanent, it's that the signs aren't permanent. Oh, okay. Well, I revised my if, proposal for this year either way so that the signs I am proposing are permanent in case I did misunderstand any of that. So I kind of okay. simplified my application. I, I didn't. Year. I didn't have time to look at it, but yeah, well, because I, I sent it at the right before this meeting, basically. So I apologize and hope that you're still able to take it into consideration. If I remember right, we've turned down applications and an and application in the past for being late. I can't remember this would, which one. This would qualify for off season, wouldn't it? It was a trail group. You, yeah. sure. you could put these up in November if if. I could put um, them up any time of the year. So you could reapply in June. You could reapply in June for November if they're permanent oh. signs. Okay. Anything I can <laughs> do to be considered for this one? I don't think we should set a precedence, Paul. Understood. Okay. Um, can I uh, can I ask a few few clarifying questions that we, kind of that we just talked about? All right, perfect. Yep. Um, so back to the, the permanence of the signs. Um, you know, our our trails are in set locations as they've been for a significant amount of time. And um, they are always, you know, yes, it's for seasonal use, but um, I guess I don't understand going back to the, the example that you guys provide for the ice skating rink. Um, 
what the, what the difference would be and how, you know, if there would be a way that I could possibly reword my application or if there's something I'm just not understanding, if there's any way you could clarify that for me. So I can, I can pull up that email as well if that, mm -hmm. if that helps. Um, well, I sent that email, so. Mm -hmm. Or last year's email. I think yeah. your point about the ice rink is a very good one and I hadn't caught the analogy, so. Um. Did we turn, I, I don't, I must have, did we, did we decline a signage application from you last year? Uh, yeah, I remember, uh, I, I mean, that we're in sort of a bind because we all want to help the snowmobile club and, we, yeah. and I'm glad oh, you're no. here at this meeting. We <laughs> said, I'm bringing all this up at the 11th Stuart hour said, and this is, you know, so any, any information I can when, when Stuart was quite definitive and he said it wasn't eligible. The ATV. Oh, that's yeah, what, rumor. That's what you apply for, right? Yeah. Yes. I think it was the signage. No, I, oh, I remember, oh. I'm remembering the equipment, the ATV. The ATV. Yeah. The that was, um, right. That was, um, sorry, I have company in here. Um, that one was, that was a couple of years ago. We were attempting to get some matching funding on a piece of equipment. Um, we now realize, yes, that one clearly is against the, uh, is not acceptable through the CPA um, guidelines. So that one, I think we don't really even have to talk about because um, I'm not, I won't be reapplying for that one. Um, there, you know, I would possibly in the future like to look into applying for, for other things. Most likely it would be something along the lines of a, uh, a bridge repair, but that's, that would be perfect. No yeah. questions asked. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but that'll be a very we only have a couple bridge. I think that would actually qualify for this. And um that's gonna be a long process. So that'd be something that we'd be discussing, you know, well in advance of me sending in an application. And we can the we can also the CPA has administrative expenses that will pay for plans and surveying it. Engineering. Yeah. Into that. yeah, you definitely yeah, we'll need that. Yeah. Well, Judy, you're you're getting to what I I I it may be that. The, the date timing of the application makes this impossible. But I mean, the snowmobile club trails are terrific and they're terrific for those of us who walk. They're just great, you know? And this proposal is for, you know, $400 and change. <laughs> and I, is there any, I, I know we're not gonna make any decision tonight, but would it be possible for us to consider funding it out of our administrative line? Or do the administrative? Ex I'm actually asking about process right now. Or, or yeah. are, are, or must our administrative expenses be somehow linked to a larger proposal? I've always assumed the latter. Yeah, I, I, we haven't ha we haven't run into this, but it's such a tiny proposal. I know. Well, I, I suggested yeah. to Polly set up a GoFundMe last year. I'd still be happy to contribute. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah, I would too. I would too. It's our club is, um, you know, where we we have, you know, a, a bank account to sustain us on the short term now. But, um, you know, going forward, such as a bridge repair, we don't we don't have enough to repair a bridge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our our two trail groomers are over twenty years old. Um, you know, so we have some larger expenses that we're going to be incurring in the near future. Um, and knowing, you know, we won't. We won't be able to get assistance to get a groomer. There are other expenses that we incur on an annual basis um, or, you know, periodic basis, such as these, the signage that, you know, to be able to possibly have a, a resource that could assist, you know, occasionally um, is kind of one of the reasons why I'm, you know, sending applications in here through the CPA. Um, you know, we really, you know, we, we feel strongly and passionately about having these trails in town, about maintaining our activity. Um, you know, we know that all the, you know, property owners that we speak with, you know, we have good relationships with them, um, you know, and just being members of the community in general, you know, we, uh, we have a sign up at Hurley, take part in all the parades that are around. Um, so, you know, basically I'm trying to make sure, see what we have for resources out there to assist us going forward. Anna, didn't the open space committee look at, or aren't there state grants for trails? Um, um, there, there is a state grant program for trails one of the challenges we don't have an open space committee it was disbanded well, know, but, after but think... so sort of who would who would put it together um i i don't but know the snowmobile club represents or 
Yeah, it was in I, a lot of terms. It would pro I, probably be I, a multi-term proposal anyway. I would think, right, maybe. right. I don't know a lot about this, but one of um, the the person in town who knows a whole lot about that state trail funding program is Pete Westover. I don't know if you know him, Paul, but oh, he he'd be a great resource, and I think he's even a consultant to some other towns and. Um, yeah, we'll of, we'll get you Pete's contact information because he might, you know, in some you know, sometimes maybe you're thinking too small. <laughs> you know? Well, it's, I mean, <laughs> this was you know also I figured as I'm I'm new to this process. Um, I figured I'm would and again I'm not, it's not like I'm trying to hit up this commission every year, but I'd like to start small to see how I can do. Um, I am aware of the the state. Uh, it's the RTP uh, Trails you Grant are. Program. Okay. Um, yep, I'm very aware. I'm, it's I'm complicated, aware. right? It is. It yeah. Yes and no. I mean, they they require quite a bit a bit of documentation, but it's you know follow directions. It's relatively straightforward. And I'm going to be applying for a grant with them to attempt to get a new uh, groomer this year Great. because, like I said, ours if one of ours goes, we're uh, we're Super. in trouble. Um, but yeah, so it's not the I you know the four hundred dollars in in for the trail signs, you know, our club could incur that cost right now. Um, but if there's assistance available to help us to help that would allow us to, you know, maintain having funds in case of emergencies, you know, that's part of the reason why I'm applying for the CPA grant. And if you guys, you know, if you don't think that that's uh, appropriate, let me know. But I, I kind of felt that it was in line with this grant program. I'm pretty sure we got a negative from Stuart and I'll have to Go back. It's Stuart Saginaw. He's the head of the Community Preservation Coalition, which is the support group for CPA. Um, it was several years ago. I'll have to see if I can find that. I'm trying to find because I thought if there were permanent signs, they were allowed. Yeah, yeah. they're permanent. Right. They're allowed. Right. But I, I permanent means in place permanently. So if you nail it to a tree and it stays there as long as the life of the plastic, it's permanent. Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay, great. So it sounds like had I had my application in, we may be having a different conversation, which is good news. Um, so we can, uh, I can submit, yeah, right. There's another, the other one in June. The other one is the, is the second deadline is the second Tuesday in June. Okay. Um, and usually the town perfect. meeting will be in October and that's when they'll approve the money. Right. And how is it the same application form that's currently on your website? Yep. Yep. Okay. So it just redate I... your existing one. Well, the the only difference is you have to say why you're asking to be considered off cycle, and you're going to say so we can put signs up before it snows. <laughs> you know. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's... Right. I like that. Um, but I guess back to so. And I'm sorry for taking up a bunch of your time. This will be my last one. No, that's um, good. But regarding the other signs being temporary versus other seasonal installations, um, is there something that like a uh, that's specific as to why certain seasonal installations would be acceptable and others wouldn't? I can't answer that. I, I I'm in a quandary about the ice rink myself. Okay, and I I'm not I'm. I love the ice rink. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm, yeah. I'm pumped about that. I can't wait to start using it at the ground. Well, I guess the same thing can be said about a ball field. That sits idle for four months out of the year. Yeah, right. Um, or or if air we going to sit idle. Yeah, or if we were providing funding for outdoor swimming, right? Would I think I, the, the yeah. difference is, is whether it's removed or not. And or the ice rink is removed. Or so. I guess... Oh, I'm sorry. Where the ball field is technically okay. usable for other things. I mean, you could have fireworks there or something. Okay, or if we did some work at Tritown Beach, that would be a permanent, not removed, even though yeah. it's not being used. Um, I, okay. I think the difference is we asked about this, the trail signs, and we didn't ask about the ice rink. Maybe good, but... good enough for me. Um, I'm just I... thinking going. I'm just thinking going forward. Um, if I had a leg to stand on, if I were to submit a similar proposal, in the fact that yes, it's seasonal, but yes, our trails have been in the same location for 50 years. I, I think the other thing permanent. is is maybe the size. You know, if it were seasonal, but seasonal, but a a huge expenditure. So it's it's really a capital expenditure, not a um, not a small one, but that. 
I'm thinking out loud and it's not thinking very well. I'll, I'll no, that's, okay. that's okay. Um, I think it's important that you define these trails as not just snowmobile trails. Like Sonic said earlier, horses use them. Yeah, dog walkers, cyclists, walkers, yes. hunters. Um, yeah, they 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 get quite a bit of use. Yes, yeah. they do. Um, okay, well, that's all my questions. I again apologize for getting the application in late. Um, but uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you as well. See you around town, Chris. I, I love the batting cage. I can't wait till that thing gets up. <laughs> uh, all right, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna hop off. I believe that uh, my business here is done. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thanks I'm for joining us. Ahead. Thank you. Okay, folks. We are going to look at um the hell are we gonna look at? <laughs> Not that one. Oh, the astral turf on the batting cages. You gonna look into that, Judy? Yep. And I'll go back and look what Stuart said about signage. I'm pretty sure it was allowed. It's just it couldn't be temporary because we we talked. Oh, yeah, signage fine as long as like, the Waitley Wood signage. I'm sure we paid CPA money. Went okay. Probably went for that. Okay. Andrew. Yes. When are we getting together again? My calendar says in January 2024, the second Tuesday is the 10th. 5 p.m. via Zoom. Sounds good. We all still happy doing Zoom? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think the second Tuesday is the ninth. Oops, am I wrong? Yeah. Yep, that's it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Thank you. <laughs> so, right. I heard you say Tuesday and I was looking. It's it the, the right, ninth is my son's yeah. birthday. That's all and right. I've been, yeah. I, 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 I probably said Tuesday. I meant Wednesday. Sorry. Totally. Yeah, no, I'm I'm glad that that's what you meant. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah I can do the tenth, not the ninth. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully if he does have any bridges that he comes before us, because like you said, we can definitely fund that. Yeah, right? yeah. especially the engineering and the surveying and all that. Because if it's the bridges I'm thinking of, he's going to have to deal with a lot of uh, wetland issues. <laughs> he's crossing a lot of brooks. Yep. yep. Anybody have anything else? Wow, one hour meeting. It's unusual. Yeah, it's a lot of projects. Well, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah. Yes. And you. Likewise. I hope everybody gets what they want. Yeah. Stay safe. Stay warm. Stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope for puppy. snow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye -bye.